Welcome to the Mogul Podcast. I'm Tim Bryson, Director of Athlete Education, and I am the host of our show. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning community member, welcome back. As y'all know, the Mogul Podcast is dedicated to educating all NIL athletes and brands how to ensure compliance, how to maximize NIL activity, and how to make a difference in the ever-evolving NIL landscape. Today we have another special guest, man. Someone that uh, was going to be on this podcast sooner than later, uh, but definitely realized and, and have come to understand that this is the moment that this guest needs to be on and share their thoughts, their experience, and, uh, and their voice. Uh, this guest is a former college athlete. This guest is a father. This guest is very active on social media and a, and a strong advocate for not just Black athletes, but all college athletes um, in the NCAA ecosystem. Without further ado, Yes, I'm TV, but there's another TV that's even more important. Trayvon Briggs, welcome to the Mogul Podcast, bro. What's going on, bro? I don't know if it's uh, if, if I'm the TV that's more important. I'll say older, the, the, the older version of TV, but uh, what's going on, G? <laughs> hey, bro. Hey let, hey, let me keep it a buck with you, bro. So check this out. I went to Zara this past weekend, and I picked up this fit. So if you're not watching, make sure you check out this, uh, this pullover. And I don't know if I feel like Peyton Manning or Papa Briggs. Or a Barack Obama, <laughs> but I'm here, bro. <laughs> hey, man, you looking, you looking real like you know, you three time insurance policy award winner of the year. Just got done with the conference in Boca Raton. Hey, it's real grown man, bro. You <laughs> you handling your business, hey, G? <laughs> hey, I told my homegirl earlier, bro. It's like it's my black man in tech outfit. <laughs> It's not black men in tech outfit, man. Boy, We're not here to talk. Pace and now they black men in tech. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm, you, glad bro. On the, I'm glad to get you on the pod, man, because I think, uh, I, need, I know I'm confident that our conversation today is definitely one uh, that we haven't quite um, really unraveled. I hate the word unpack, right? Really unraveled, unlayered um, in the NIL space. Yeah. And that's particularly around academics. But you know how this thing goes, right? But before we get started, segment one, for those who may not know who you are, and or what you're about, what you stand for, and, and the impact you are creating in this world. TB, man, what's your story? Yeah, man, well, shoot. Y'all have already heard it. TB, Trayvon Briggs, Trey, however you want to call me, however else you remember it. Um, best way to put where I'm from, I'm a West Coast baby with Southern roots. Um, shoot, former student athlete, my father, um, huge advocate. And, man, I just really got a lot of my experiences and what I'm passionate about doing just from – life lessons, honestly, from, you know, injuries, from watching my uncle, you know, go through his story with, with being a, a student athlete, a college athlete, trying to get out the way of saying student athlete, a college athlete, um, but then also, you know, being a professional athlete as well. So I think a great mixture for me has just been, you know, lived experiences, but also being able to be aware enough at a young age to sort of see, you know, how things was moving and, and having that um, interesting experience of having, you know, one family member, you know, be seen as undersized and had heavy doubts and went the free agency route and was bounced around to a lot of teams versus the other family member that went to the same exact university from the same exact state, uh, county, everything. Um, and they grew up together, go the same exact route, but also have the size and the talent and the ability to play both professional baseball and professional football. Um, so just sort of found myself in between the both of those spaces. I come from a very athletic family, um, but I think for me, um, the injuries and, and everything that I've endured has helped me value education in a different space. I, I won't sit here and say that I love higher ed or I love uh, education in, 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 in general, but I do love the opportunities and the relationships that it does bring. Um, you know, great example, me and you, like, you know, we, I don't think we would have ever met if we weren't in the higher ed space. Um, so like I said, man, um, I really just value just the live experiences that I've had, but also the lessons that luckily I was aware enough to take um, along the ride and now producing all of that and putting that blueprint together and trying to build that out to be the person that, you know, I needed when I was a former uh, college athlete and, and you know, um, and high school athlete and all those different spaces. So um, you know, I, I keep it simple for the most part, you know, and that's that's where I put the, the best value is in the simplicity of things and how I can break it down, because I think that, you know, overall, all of us, whether we're in college, high school, children, you know, professionals, we all can get caught up in, you know, 
the complexity of things, the complexity of things and how much stuff we have to do. And sometimes how you just got to like <laughs> chop it down so you can figure out those steps and those micro wins and how to get there. Um, so that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Um, and shoot, here now at the University of Illinois as a senior academic counselor, um, where, you know, student athlete development is still near to my heart. Um, but, you know, I get to use those talents in other spaces when we talk about academics. So great experience. No, that's real talk. And I like how you say keep it simple. And I might just actually be the uh, title of this podcast episode, what, five minutes in. Uh, but two things you said when talking about education, yo, was right, the lessons you learn and then a blueprint. And when I think about TV, right, I think hashtag impact all caps on purpose. Yep. And when I think about impact, I think about the scholarship, right, and the nonprofit uh, work that you're doing um, in that space. So for those, again, who may not be aware, just talk more about, again, what is a scholarship and why a scholarship, but then two, some of the nonprofit leadership work you've done, given that that's so connected to the NIO space as well. Yeah, man. So um, the scholarship is the Trayvon Briggs um, Community Impact Scholarship that I have at the University of New Mexico. Um, and I love how you put uh, impact with all caps for a purpose. You know, we always talk, me and you always offline talk about the intentionality of things and what we stand behind. And, you know, impact for me is individ individuals making progress amongst our communities together. So understanding that it takes a village, it's a group effort in what we do. And that's practically the scholarship. That's honestly how the scholarship came about. I knew I didn't have $1,000 during the pandemic to just donate on a yearly basis, um, you know, to my, to my alma mater and, and to, to students that needed that money. But the village, the people that, you know, supported me and the relationships that I built, we all came together. You know, I think I was on Twitter starting off like, yo, I just need 100 people to donate $10. And if you can't donate, retweet it. If you can't retweet it, just comment, do something. Um, and, you know, I, that was really how it started off, you know, because for the longest, I've always wanted to figure out how to get back, um, you know, since I, was, since I was a kid. But I always assumed that my vehicle um, had to be the NFL to make money so I can give back my own money to give to other people. So that was the only way that I saw, you know, having that professional space and, and where I needed to be to do that. So I think once I took that step forward and I, once again, the relationships that I built through higher ed, um, saw somebody else that had a scholarship at their university and I talked to them and was like, dang, so, you know, you're just able to have this money out your pocket. And they was like, boy, please, like I work at higher ed. How much, like, how much money do you think I make? <laughs> and I was like, so how are you getting this money? Like, is it a grant? Like, what is, what is it? She's like, it's the support of other people. And this is how it, I'm starting it and broke it down for me. And I'm like, dang, so it doesn't have to come out of my pocket initially. Like I'm just that bridge builder. And um, since then, like we, we probably made over $10,000. Mind you, we started this back in 2020. So um, we're on a five-year schedule. We got to get to 25,000 to start it as an endowment, if that's the decision that we're trying to make. But I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, for me, I always want to figure out what can I do in the community. And I think that was a different space of the community that my experiences and work um, helped me understand. When I stepped out of athletics and went over into being an academic advisor, I worked with students that was getting kicked out because of, you know, religion because of you know sexual preference, because of how they identify. They getting kicked out the crib. They don't have a dorm like I have for the free to go to or anything like that. Or they didn't get a scholarship that they, a scholarship check that they can just have and um, you know rely on that. So when I started understanding like the the social capital piece of it, but also the resources that are out there that these students don't have or may not know of, um, I wanted to be part of that change. So that's the reason why I didn't make it an athletic a uh, base scholarship or a donation to the athletic fund. Um, I wanted it to be something different. So uh, I think that has, you know, in full circle has once again helped me understand the importance of resources on campus, um, scholarships, but then also just like the impact higher ed can have. Because in my opinion, it's all relational. That's how I preach it. You may not understand or want to be part of the coursework, but there's going to be somebody in that room. There's going to be somebody in that office, that career fair somewhere, that internship that is going to change, you know, and a light bulb is going to flick, flicker on, or you're going to further your path in your career. Um, so, you know, I, I try to use higher ed as more of a tool of, you know, as a hustle and grind versus, you know, just these, you know, prestigious universities with these letters behind your name. 
Come on, now, now you're talking about the game. You're talking about the rules to the game, which we're going to uh, dissect and really um, uh, discuss in segment two. Um, but before we go any further, I want to make sure that I tee this up, you know, Dwayne Wade, LeBron style, if you will, so I can chop this clip up and send it to you afterwards. But I asked Logan, right? Logan had the hair. Shout out to Logan Hill at Ohio State. They had the hair going to the flow. We see the beard. Yeah. What product are you using, bro? Talk to it. What product? Shout somebody out. Shout a brand out, yo. Let's get your money. Let's so the sponsorship. Um, man, so I that's so funny that you that you asked that because I was just talking about earlier today. I'm about to cut my beard off. And I'm about to shorten it and grow it back out to use a different product. So I have this thing where like where I'm trying to find different products that actually work for my hair and for my beard. Um, and I just start my beard from like ground zero and then just use that and see if it really works. So when people be like, oh yeah, try this out. Like it really works, it helps. We're really gonna find out. <laughs> so um, right now I've used, um, I've used Scotch Porter. That's, that's really been like my top one. That's been the one that I've really grinded out with. Um, I've even gone over to the competitor with Shea Moisture um, for certain products over there. Um, right now I'm using um, T-Raw's Beers Essentials. Um, so they got like a really good beard balm, beard oil, like wash everything. And then they got the, uh, beard and serum. So, you know, it, it's, it, they, they're good. I will say cost-effective brand, like everything organic, like super solid black owned, uh, dude from LA, actually a psychologist. Like, I was like, dang, like that was your, that's your little side hustle and everything. He's like, oh, this is, this is not. I don't call it a side hustle. I was like, damn, I didn't mean it could be disrespectful. Uh, but yeah, man, that's what I'm currently using right now, man. So yeah, bro, just, you know, try to let it, try to let it flow, try to let it get some growth out here. I love it. Uh, I, let, I, I try to let mine go during uh, the, the early stages of the pandemic. And it ain't look too right, but I ain't always doing it. Wait, is weather looking? It, it was just, yeah, yeah, I had to, yeah, it wasn't, I, might, I might have to, I might, I might double back down on not uh, cutting it off. Man, this weather looking, I don't know if I can, if I can handle it. I don't know, bro. I'm on a one and a half and a two, man, on the side and on the, uh, across the chin. Hey, but segment two, dog, segment two, while we're here, NIL, and particularly athletic academic advising. Now, there's a lot of different ways we can take this, right? And I think when I go talk to classes, even now, um, as a guest lecturer, the first thing I'm, I say to people is like, let's just first understand like what the game is, right? It's like, what actually is the NCA? Like, what is GSR, right? What is APR? And I'm not going to have us, at least I said that right now, I'll include that into the notes of this podcast. People can go learn on their own and they hit you up afterwards. Mm -hmm. But there is still a game, right? Going back to the fundamentals, right? Going back to keeping it simple and that whether you say student athlete or we say college athlete, those that are in school and competing at a varsity level, their yeah. job is to play their sport, <laughs> And go to class at minimum, right? Keep keeping it simple at minimum. Yet this whole NIL piece is like kind of come in, right? Uh, has it been a distraction? Has it been a supplement? So this is your experience now, right? Being that you've been at you know two, three, I guess four different schools, I guess two or three since mm -hmm. uh, NIL legislation has been in conversation, really been active. Like, what's been the conversation around like NIL, particularly in those academic type advising meetings, right? Given that those who are in student development where outside of academic advising have different conversations, we can be more explicit in our conversation about name, image, and likeness. So for me personally, int intentionality, right? So sure. I actually love the way that you piece that question because I can make this once again, so simple and like, it ain't gotta be anything long. Um, but NIL, like everything else, has its goods and its bads. And especially when it's first starting off, everything feels wild because there's no true control. You're not, I personally feel like we're not in a space right now where we're managing it, but it's being tolerated. And when things are tolerated and not managed, there is room for things to sort of just become the wild, wild west. And it's like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, no, nah, we was okay with this, but now this is a little too much. Like now we got to put the, the we got to chop the hand off. As we sort of seen with the rules of, you know, now, you know, I believe the rule was just passed last week or so where, you know, college athletic departments can no longer, you know, assist in that space, you know, with the, with the connections, with, you know, varsity alumni connect, all that stuff. Like it has to be restructured. Well, on top of that, you're seeing people who have been brought into this, you know, have been brought into this position for strictly that. 
And now they're being told maybe 90% of their job is no longer that. And now it has to be revamped and looked into a different way, right? So when it comes to academic advisement, I'm safe in a sense. But what also comes out of that is you have to, what I will tell you know a lot of people, especially academic advisors, is being intentional with their major, being intentional with them general education classes, but being intentional with them electives. Because you have now a space where you know if you have a student that is super quiet, they don't like to talk, you know, but they are super talented or they are very marketable or they have a brand, they have a story, maybe they should be taking that public speaking class. Maybe they should be taking a psychology course or maybe they should be taking a marketing class or an advertising class. Maybe they should be taking a course on podcasting out of the College of Media. Like this is a part now where you're not giving students because, and I can tell you this fresh off my head because I'm still going through registration week. We just had registration week for classes last week. So it's like when I'm talking to students and, you know, I'm seeing on social media or I'm, I'm hearing, you know, oh, I got this NIO deal over here. I got this over here. And I'm starting to compare the classes that they're taking and the electives that they have. I'm, well, how are you, how are you enhancing yourself and your brand throughout these classes? If you're saying, okay, well, I need to take something, but let's take something interesting. Let's take something not only interesting, but that's going to benefit you the most. Um, so when having those conversations, it's like, all right, let's look into a community comm class. Let's look into a course over here that has to do with, you know, um, brand ambassadors or, or doing things like this or the qualities or skill set that you need. Because what we do find, especially coming out of this pandemic, you had student athletes, college athletes, students um, that were online for two years. And now that they're coming back in person, they don't really know how to have like, like fruitful conversation. And when I say fruitful conversation, like they don't know the process of introducing yourself, being themselves, how to continue a conversation, delivery, reading the room, the, the emotional, the social awareness, like that stuff is brand new for them despite them being 20, 21 years old. And I'm not even talking about the ones that were COVID babies. Like this is their first semester or last semester was their first semester on campus. So it's about how do we utilize and, you know, A, how do we help you get back to that, to that spot? How do we help you get back to that space? How do we make you, you know, feel better? But then how do we make your degree, how do we advance your degree to being even more worthwhile? It's no longer having those letters behind your name, that piece of paper. Everybody got a BA. Everybody got a BS. Everybody's getting the master's. Hey, everybody damn there starting to get an MBA. You have to find your way to set yourself from the rest. So what are some things that we're going to be doing? And I think what's great about that is I remember when I was at the Black Student Athlete Summit and they had Shaka Smart talking. And Shaka Smart was talking about Mo Bamba. And he was like, we're not preparing Mo for a four-year degree. We're putting him in classes that are going to prepare him for his big blockbuster MBA contract. So he's like, we're putting him in negotiation classes. We're putting him in classes on law and torts and understanding sports contracts and business marketing and entrepreneurship and stuff like that. And it's like, you hear that, you like, dang, like, you just saying F school, right? But he's not. He's saying, let's be intentional about it and let's see it for what it is. This guy is about to go off to the pros. And we got to prepare him the most that we can within the next four months. Not give him all the pieces and tools, but we got to do the best that we can while we have him. And when you look at it like that for certain student, for certain college athletes, you're going to have that in that case where it's like, I'm going to prepare you the best I can while we have you here. For me personally, I don't have any sports like that. So it's a good mix of we're going to make sure you get this degree and do what you want. But also, if you want to make sure that you're using NIO, that you're using your brand, that you're telling your story, we have programs, we have classes, we have things that we can take that can further further you along and help you with that preparation. Um, because, I mean, it's it's tough. It's, it, it really is tough because it's pretty much in your hands to make your money. And if you are not showcasing your brand, and we're talking about just showcasing the brand, but if you're not showcasing maintaining, but then also making sure that it does not that it has to be squeaky clean, but that you're not damaging your brand too, that you're not protecting it, then like one day it can be great. And then the next day it's like, hey, we had this little situation 
maybe we should look into, you know, a PR class. Maybe we should look into, you know, something like this. So you understand the importance of, you know, this other side of it, um, which I think right now, even though we're seeing it on a professional level, we're seeing PR cases everywhere right now with just how things are going and, and, and you know, hearing different messages and, and views of, of college, of, of professional athletes. And it's like, dang, I wonder, did they have a PR person talk to them before they went out there and said that? Because now it's like, sheesh. So for these college athletes, it's, it's almost the same way. You have to treat them as professional athletes in that sense. Um, because I mean, man, let's, let's look at it for what it is, you know? So that's, that's what we're trying to do. That's well said. I, I, I like the, uh, the analogy, if you are right, tolerate versus manage. I think what Shotgun Smart was saying in regards to what classes Obama was taking, right? They were managing, they were managing the situation, right? They weren't just tolerating and letting take GNAs and then get out after a year, right? Right. And I think part of that comes with an ownership of athletic departments, right? And administrators and those within athletes camp. I think another part comes the accountability part on the athletic departments really is look at the situation and, and, and grab a hold of it as opposed to, again, like you said, tolerate and just let laws of fair. But one thing that I've seen, particularly, again, being on the campus and now being at Mobile, um, is a huge conversation, dialogue, et cetera, in, re in regards to diversity, right? And when people hear the word diversity, I think, at least speaking for myself, I jump to immediately race and gender. But one thing that I've been very upfront with people nowadays is like, yo, diversity is also institutional type. The diversity is also division, right? The diversity is also sport. And the diversity is also geographic areas. So what's happening in the Big Ten country is much different than SEC versus Big 12 and Pac-12. Right. And then you've been at a Pac-12 institution, currently at a Big Ten institution. Obviously, we're not naming names or anything, but just culture-wise, like being in the West Coast to legit Chicago area, right? LA, two of the top five biggest cities in the country. Like, what's been the conversation like? Like, what's different or simply? Man, um, it's almost tough not to name names. You know what I mean? Because it's sure. like, just based off of the experiences, it's like you almost can understand more if you know. Um, what sure, sure. I, I guess the best way I will put it is understanding that coming from the West Coast in a place like the Pac-12, where your primarily recruits are kids from big cities, um, particularly right there in, in the land of, of, of California, everything is so glamorized it's more proactive as far as how we put it out. What's the message, how it looks like. I will honestly say it looks, it looks sexy in the Pac-12. That's the best way to put it. It looks sexy. And it's one of those things where, where as far as like how we present this to people, not only is it gonna look sexy and like it's like you're part of that culture, but then it's also gonna bring in 10, five, five to 10 more recruits <laughs> that's gonna say, oh, I want that too, you know? And then, you know, you're looking at the Pac-12 and I mean, with football this year, they're doing a great job. There's four teams right now in the top 15, but best believe two of those teams that are in that top 15 that are right behind each other, they're trying to bring everything to them and it's glamorized and it looks good. And it's now building this whole bubble around what we do and how we do. I mean, I remember when I was there, you know, I had a kid tell me and it was on his teamwork. It's like, yo, gotta, gotta, you know, I got a, I got an NIL meeting. And I'm just like, so what do you mean? Like, bro, what, <laughs> you know what we have over here. And he, man, I gotta go talk to them about this right now. And I gotta get this, you know, so it's like, dang, like, you know, you got cats that's out here, like really treated. Like they're like that, you know, they're on that level. Um, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a walking, everything for them is almost like a fashion show and it's blitzed with how much, um, persona and personality is also put into it. The programming is almost, um, not, not totally different, but it's entirely different as far as how they do their programming. Where are they taking these student athletes, uh, these college athletes during the summers? Who are they having it speaking in front of them? How do they have these programs and stuff? Whereas over here, um, your academics is still tightly kept and valued. Um, you're gonna still make sure that you're making time for this right here, but then it's also a lot more grind for yourself, you know, and how you put yourself out there um, in, 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 a, in a Big Ten institution. Um, and, and the thing that I love the most about it 
is with the Big Ten, I feel like, and I, I think it's everywhere, you know, but I think, you know, places like the Big Ten, um, it truly showcases that anybody can be marketable. Like we've seen, you know, from gymnastics, we've seen from women's basketball, you got your boy in Nebraska with uh, Dakotas. His name is Dakotas, and he just got that um, AC cooling commercial. Like, you got people with mattresses commercials. Like, there's so much market, and there's so much down to earth out in the Big Ten and, and, and in regions like this that people have the ability to take more of those opportunities. Um, one thing that I love that we're doing here, we got two programs that are being that are rolled out where you know, they have an ambassador program where they're working with a student from the College of Media. And they're having these discussions on how to better their brand and what are some things to do and like stuff like that. And it's a certificate program as well. So they can get their, you know, they can get a, a certificate in that while also getting that hands-on experience with their peer. And then we also have the business sports side of it where we're with the College of Geese and we got that rolled out as well. So they're open to everybody. You take advantage of it through modules and through these conversations, but understanding that that's just the starting point and there's so much more that leads that's built out and that can be led out, which is a great part of, you know, our student athlete development team. But I will say just the, from the region to how things are, how things are showcased, like that's the best way to put it. Pac-12, it's going to be all glamour it's going to be a show like it's everything every little detail everything I feel like over at the Big Ten it's like no we're not into the glamour and everything like if this is your name and this is your brand stick 10 toes down to it and learn how to build that and learn how to be in your own foot where I feel like some of my students some of my college athletes like used to be like bro this ain't me like that's not like in the pack toy this this all that ain't me like I just want to but they have people around them that have those influences of like nah it has to look like this so that you can get the attention and be the attention grabber and stuff so man it's interesting it, it, it honestly is very interesting now that I'm thinking about it of just seeing how those two are um especially because you're in a power five conference so your college athletes are coming pretty much from those same regions when they went to high school and stuff. But now that you see the location and the proximity and where they're at of how it shapes them out and what their true character is and how they are um, really is the basis of their success. I love how you put that, yo. And it's just even more, it's even more reflective now. Cause I mean, you're right, right, LA, LA Metro is very different than Chicago area, very Columbus, right? And I mean, I guess the only city you could might be able to compare it to is Miami, maybe New York, but even that's a whole different culture, right? Like it's right. that's is that's maybe maybe New York, like media, kind of. I don't know. That's that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good point. Like I wouldn't even like like even you saying that Miami's low key in a world of their own. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, like even even Miami's in a world of their own. Like I can't think of, you know, I'm like, and now I'm thinking more about it, and not to be off topic, but like it even oh, makes me think of the impact and the influence of NIL in big cities. Like, what does NIL look like in Atlanta, Georgia, when you have Georgia, the Georgia Techs and you know, Georgia States and programs like that? Because we already know it's gonna look like in Athens, Georgia, you know, but um thinking about those bigger cities and those institutions that are there, well, how does it look? How does it look at an SMU and a TCU and possibly a, a UNT, you know, or an Austin? I don't know, bro, because again, this is this leads to my next question, is that I think initially, and again, we've seen it now, what, a year and a half in, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was like, all right, all, only the D1 Power 5 schools are gonna finish too. Right. And it was like, maybe like the major cities, right? It's in Maryland, I was in Maryland being in the DMV, the media market. Yeah. Now it's like, to your point, like, is it more regional based? Like, it's over, over here, it's more glamorous over here, like get out the mud yeah. type deal. Like, and so I think to your point, because it's still so new, we're still all learning at the same time, right? And I think we're all just tolerating it, to your point, mm -hmm. as opposed to managing and really learning and critiquing like what's happening and how can we situate the Midwest to be this, right? How can we situate right. the flyover, sorry, flyover states, the flyover states to be like this, right? Yeah. And really maximize for the athletes in that area, because it's, it's 
I tell people all the time, NIL is not the same for everybody. I think it came out as if like equal access for all, like anyone can benefit. That's simply not true. It just, it just, it just, it just not true. Agreed. Different regions, different states, different has a different leverage point that they should and could take advantage, could and should take advantage of. But to say that it's the same access for everyone, it's not true. It's, yeah. it's not true. Because if it was, if it was true, if it was true, you will have NIL being a tighter, it will be tighter with community. And I say it will be tighter with community because one thing that I thought about when NIL first came out was, and I know it sounds random, but I was like, I wonder what University of Washington athlete is going to pull off the first Starbucks mm -hmm. NIL deal. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. who's going to be the first one because Seattle's known for its coffee, for its city, for this, that who's going to be the first one to like, be the face of what that city is known for and in, in a sense you know if it's new mexico they got the it, they have the big time you know uh balloon fiesta where everybody around from the, around the country comes to who's going to be the face of that from sports who's going to be that nc is it going to be our long distance ncaa two-time winner that's going to be able to have that meet and greet and that conversation and have, be the face of that to bring more people and revenue who is that going to be in chicago you know with you know whatever it may be like if you're if it's really equal access and equal opportunity, when does NIL start becoming something that's more, you know, community based? Because, you know, and that's another conversation, but it just it just <laughs> it's just one of those things, like you said, bro, if it really was equal, it had that real drive and it was being managed and not tolerated, then wouldn't it look like this over here? But mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm, I'm trying to keep us a little less short than uh, Walker TFB. So let me move us on to segment three because it's a good conversation, though, right? I think these conversations on the pod are just to spark additional conversation at, at the cookout, right? At the uh, at the kickback, if you will. No, but segment three, right? Action item. So uh, people have been listening there now around 30 minutes or so. Uh, but there's three things, three things that you want our audience members, our podcast listeners to take away and leave with after our conversation together. Three things. Um, I'll probably say the first one is if for I'll save this one for college athletic professionals um, that that are working with college athletes. Um, understand that your programming and your development impacts the college athlete. So no matter what you're putting together, no matter how great it looks, no matter how simple it may be, no matter how complex it is remember who's your intended audience. Because at the end of the day, those are the ones that have to use this. These are the people that have to, you know, we have to enhance their experience. And most importantly, these are the people that, you know, we built this for um, and, and are the ones that are gonna be able to market this and showcase this and, and show that, hey, this is successful. This, this can work. Um, I'll say number two, especially for those that work in academic services, um, that work with college athletics, create partnerships across the board with these major departments. And when I say major, these academic major departments. So if it's the College of Media, if it's psychology, if it's sociology, um, whatever department that can play a huge role in NIL or spark the interest of these college athletes and have them thinking, you know, a big picture, a bird's eye view, bring those people in to have these conversations because you know, these institutions have almost a limited amount of resources. I'm sure we have a professor on every campus that can talk about the psychology of marketing and really break that down in a simple sense for our college athletes to be like, oh, okay, so maybe I should start posting at 12, two and three, three, four times a week, you know, and things like that. So just the intentionality behind that. And then I think the last thing, man, just keep it simple. Like, and that, that goes for whether it's for the college athlete, whether it goes for the work that we do, um, no matter how complex it is, if you really sit down and you learn how to break it down um, and give yourself that grace and time, make it simple. Because I think we, we, get, in, we get wild up and, and, and too stressed out sometimes at the initial part of it. And we don't just put in the work. And then as we go through the process, we get it done completely successfully. We sit there and we look back and we just like, dang, what was I doing all that hooting and hollering for? Like, just, just keep it simple. One thing I love to tell my college athletes is like, I'm totally fine with you looking 10 steps down the road, but it is your responsibility to come back. 
because we can look as far as we want to, as much as we want to, but that moment we stay there and then we fall over something right in front of us and trip over something right in front of us, now we're delaying our time. So just come back, just come back. Um, so yeah, those would probably be my top three. So I said, I like that last analogy, just to come back. It's your, respons it's your responsibility to come back, right? No, let's not chip over something we can, we can step over, right? Uh, and put behind us. TB, before I, can, before I uh, let us go, man, I got to give a big, big, big shout out to Dr. Bree Robinson, future Dr. Liz Reyes, uh, Dr. Stefan Fuqua, the team, man, ILL. Love man. Y'all, man. And I'm going to tell you, man, it's, that's, it's an amazing group. Like, like, I wish I had the words, but being here for, for going almost going on two months um, next week. Dang, it's only been two months. What a year. Yeah. What a year. Yeah. Um, what a year. I, will, I will honestly say, man, just from the intentionality, from the work that they do, from the people that they just are outside of the office, bro, uh, it, it really helps. Like, I, I will say that for, for any college athletic professionals, especially those that are managing a team, bro, be intentional with the people that you bring in and the people that you have, because that's going to save us from a lot of uh, NACTA emails about openings. So, um, that you know, and that retention. So, yeah, be 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 intentional with that and have some purpose with it. But yeah, all amazing people for sure. That's love, man. With TB, love you, bro. Great you conversation, too, my guy. Appreciate you, my G. You already know what it is, man. For everyone else, watch this. No, I'm just kidding, man. Be sure y'all tune into this episode. If, if you listen to it on the audio, make sure you run it back on YouTube. Uh, check out my pay and Eli Barack Obama pop up predicts. Uh, pull over if you will. Uh, Y'all know what it is, man. Hey, send me some, uh, send me some uh, Elana gear, man. I know. I'm still trying to figure out how to say it correctly too. Oh. Elana, Elana, Elena. I don't know how to say that shit. Yeah. yeah. Stefan, I need a dad hat, bro. I need a dad hat. I'm coming. Everyone else, man. Thank you for tuning in, bro. We out as always. Get motivated.